okay so let's summarize briefly so i think today should be the last last lecture on ldpc course i don't think there's anything else i want to do we'll move on to other topics as we go along so let's let's summarize all that we did with ldpc codes okay so 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 first thing we saw was we saw we saw things with respect to the bsc okay and uh, gallagher a decoder okay and uh, we did density evolution for that so i started off with regular codes right so first thing i did was regular codes and then we saw irregular codes all those things okay and uh, then we moved out to lgn well bpsk or lgn not to and then we saw the soft message passing decoder this this decoder is also called belief propagation decoder there are so many ways of uh, okay so it's also called belief propagation decoder so one thing you have to understand uh, in today's research world if at all you decide to move into research if an area becomes hot okay millions of people will work on it at the same time okay? so you'll see there'll be lots of works around this so if you just search for ldpc you'll you'll hit so many papers it's quite uh, mind boggling okay so the stuff soft message passing decoder has been analyzed from so many perspectives from perspectives of statistical mechanics okay from perspectives of uh, dynamics like for instance nonlinear dynamics complicated chaos dynamics and all that then from good old probability then almost everything is based on simulations at the end of the day but still all those things are there so belief propagation is one such thing a one way of viewing it inference all these issues okay and then we also saw the density evolution which is quite uh, interesting okay so so at the end of the day what should you worry about in ldpc codes okay the most important thing is degree distribution right hopefully you you agree with me okay degree distribution controls performance that is the biggest moral of the story okay so anybody gives you talks about ldpc codes first question you should ask is what's the degree distribution of your code so based on that you find the threshold based on that you decide how good the code is in compared to the capacity or how good it is in simulation and then simulations will track the threshold as long as the block length is large enough okay it becomes large okay and the way we do analysis we make a lot of approximations we say the neighborhood is tree like and we assume uh, well, that's the main approximation then we assume the all zero code word for symmetric channels all that is true once we do all that it seems like the analysis is so approximate that it should not work but in reality what happens even if the, those assumptions are violated the threshold is a very good measure for how good or how bad the code is just make your block length large enough okay and it's quite remarkable that you can get really really close to capacity and implement a soft decoder with such large block length okay so if you remember our computations from before the large block length this going to be nearly impossible to even run the syndrome decoder forget about running a soft ml or map type decoder okay this soft decoder while being suboptimal clearly right it's not the map or the ml decoder while being suboptimal is good enough to get you very very close to the shannon limit so you don't need anything else right so so many people pronounced that coding was dead a few years back so ldpc codes are there if anything you want all you have to do is what design a suitable ldpc codes code okay so what i have not done is ldpc codes for other channels okay so this is uh, this is a this is area which is still active okay so one channel that is very common in practice is the isi channel right so you have some inter symbol interference even wireless also you have inter symbol interference even in wireline networks you have some the dsl type thing has lots of inter symbol interference so how do you design ldpc codes for that how do you compute threshold for that all that is interesting theory okay so for instance ofdm is a very popular uh, method today to combat isi right so how do you design ldpc codes in an ofdm environment okay so what happens in ofdm is you have lots of subcarriers 
different bits go through different sub carriers so this yi which had one distribution for you will end up having several distributions so how do you do threshold for those kind of things so all those things are still open problems so it's interesting areas to work on okay but if you want to get into those areas you should be very good at coding okay whether or not you like coding when i say coding i mean programming okay so you see most of these things involve programming if you can't write fast programs then it then it may not make uh, much sense right so if, if your program will take 5 days to run then give you an answer by the time you check whether your idea is correct or not it will be 5 days okay so after that you would have forgotten what your idea is then what do you do for those 5 days is another question okay so it's a big problem to get into these kind of areas where the result comes back after 5 days you need a short cycle and you should write good programs for it okay there's no other way for it so that's important so so if you look at the standards there are a few standards which have already which are already using ldpc codes there's something called the dvb standard digital video broadcast s ks okay, satellite okay, so if you do video broadcast from satellite uh, this uses uh, ldpc codes and there's also what's called the wimax standard uh, this is what 802.16e right okay so it's an ieee standard this also uses ldpc codes so you'll see in practice to make the implementation easier people will use specific types of ldpc codes the construction will not be arbitrary they'll actually construct a smaller matrix and then do some replacements etc they'll use ideas called what are called protograph ldpc codes these are most useful in practice if you actually look at the ldpc code in wimax it's actually irregular so they design for a particular degree distribution and then they'll they'll use permutation matrices etc very smartly to simplify your uh, process your construction process otherwise it becomes very complicated and in fact it's one thing to construct a 500 by 1000 matrix okay sparse matrix it's another thing to remember it right so how do you represent it in hardware and software okay so it takes a lot of memory and if you have to if it's not very structured it becomes very painful okay so, so these protograph codes are ideas to make that thing more structured okay so you put in more structure on top of the randomness so you remember one of the philosophies when we moved into capacity approaching codes was what you need a random element right if you just have a pure deterministic thing you're not going to be able to well, at least so far people have not succeeded in getting very close to capacity with purely deterministic constructions okay so these are random parts so you do a mix and match between the two to get a uh, good performance so that's one thing and the other thing you'll see is nobody will actually implement this full blown soft message passing decoder in practice it's possible one can do it but the most popular decoder is what's called a min sum decoder okay <clears throat> so the idea behind the min sum decoder is uh, is the following so if you look at the see the bit node update is nothing right bit node update doesn't involve anything you just have to add and adding is very easy in vlsi and all that the check node update on the other hand is a major pain you need a big uh, lookup table and the other problem with the lookup table is this since f is a non linear function then you're taking log which is again a very 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 poorly be behaved function you cannot do uniform quantization and expect good behavior okay so you might have to increase your quantization for doing the f alone and it just becomes messy in vlsi it's possible to do it people have done it but there is an approximation called the min sum decoder which is much better so what they do is the following okay so if you look at this check node update what are you doing you're doing f of f of x1 plus f of x2 plus so on till f of i x x d okay this is what you're doing right this is the most complicated part everything else is easy right this is what this is the most complicated part so what you do is what is f f is log of tan hyperbolic of say some x by 2 right this is what you're doing so tan hyperbolic is between 0 and 1 okay and if you take log of that number you're going to get a negative number okay log amplifies what amplifies amplifies values close to 0 right if the value is close to 1 log will not distinguish anything okay so out of all these f of values which will be the maximum see which which after doing f which of these terms will be the maximum the one that corresponds to the minimum xi right do you agree okay the one that one that corresponds to the minimum xi will have the maximum contribution so what you do is you only take the maximum contribution and ignore everything else just 
just delete everything else from your consideration okay so instead of doing this i'll approximate it as f of f of x min but what is f of f of x min x minutes okay so this is the approximation it's called the min sum decoder which simplifies your whole thing and you can show the min sum decoder loses you can do some further approximations carefully and you can make it lose only 0.7 db or so when compared to the full soft message passing decoder okay right so you pick the excess which is minimum and then take ignore everything else you get the min sum decoder okay so this can be implemented very easily for all of them so what you do is you find the two least minimums replace everything else with the minimum and the minimum value with the next minimum etc so it's very easy to implement this uh, one can do this very easily so it involves finding minimum which is not too scary in vlsi without any problem you can do this okay so people implement something like this in practice you mean some decoders more popular there are so many other practical uh, issues that you take over okay another thing i have not talked about is encoding okay so what we have from the ldpc degree distribution and construction is what we have only the parity check matrix okay so h which you know is sparse okay so but when you want to encode what should you do you should go from h to g in systematic form okay when you want it in systematic form you have to convert this into ip right and then you put your message here and you'll get your parity part here as p equals m m capital p right well transpose whatever you take make sure you take care of those things carefully okay so you'll get this p equals mp but when you convert this part into i you're doing a lot of row operations even though each row is sparse when you do all these row operations p will become dense okay so the problem with this is since it's a random matrix in encoding you have to remember this entire thing okay and if it is a 500 by 1000 matrix p will be a 500 by 500 matrix remembering a dense 500 by 500 matrix is impossible you can't do it become such a huge uh, amount of memory yeah, it's a waste of time okay so you have to do some smart way of doing it so what people do is there are a lot of ways of doing this one approach is to do approximate upper triangularization instead of getting i times p you get t n p okay so you go from here to t say some p prime okay so what is t this is approximately upper triangular okay so for instance how t will look is it will have this form it will be something like this this will be the non zero values okay it will be triangular here for a long time and then there will be a small gap for which it is actually fully square or something okay since this and you can make this gap very small okay make this gap very small okay and you achieve this purely by row and column swapping without any row operation okay so only row column swap what's the advantage of doing only row column swap all these matrices are still sparse there's no nothing becomes dense okay and then you use some smart linear algebra and maybe with a small dense matrix you can get away with it get away with encoding okay this is one way of doing it but you'll see in the practical codes in the standard ymax codes and dbb dvb standards they will actually design h in a way that is suitable for decoding okay so this needs to be encoding can also be designed uh for easy encoding okay so they'll have what's called a dual diagonal structure okay so it's, it makes it very easy to encode so that also is possible all those things are ways of doing uh, simple encoding okay so at the end of the day uh, if you can't encode very fast there's no point in being able to uh, use these things okay and right, so i think that kind of wraps up ldpc course i don't want to do anything more i think all most of the other areas are being explored in the in the term papers and programming assignments so when they come out to present uh, in april you'll you'll get exposed to so many of the other areas and 
LDPC codes. And as I said, it's an it's a recent area. It's exploded into so many different forms. There's so many different things in out there. People will have a you will have a tough time assimilating all of that. Okay, so it's, it's interesting to look at that. Any questions? Okay, so what we'll do from now on is move to convolutional codes, and if we have time towards the end, I'll do some turbo codes. And we'll like, uh, 